200 hour service. Let's do this. The 200 hour service requires you to change the engine filter and the engine oil. Today we're using Rotella T4 15W40. Uh, a lot of people do and that's what I'm gonna do. Everything's falling apart here, guys. Then we got the HST filter. We're not gonna change the HST oil though because that should be good for another 100 hours. Uh, we do need to change the air filter and Kubota. I don't know why they do this, but Kubota still uses two fuel filters in their tractor. One right underneath the tractor where it can get ripped off by brush and whatever else, and another one up by the engine oil. Uh, engine oil, by the engine. Uh, I don't know why they haven't come up with a solution. A lot of manufacturers have one filter that's right up near the engine that you can see and easy to replace and change. Come on, Kubota. That's one of my pet peeves. I, I love the tractor, but there's just a couple things. That's one of them. Change it, fix it, make it better, come on! Now what I do is I prime my oil filter, which means I just put a little bit of oil inside of the filter, because that filter actually holds you know maybe half a pint of oil or so and uh, for the tractor to start and have a have no oil in the filter is hard on the tractor so I don't even I don't even really fill it all the way up um, but I let that oil kind of soak in there and uh, that seems to help and then remove my glove here and I just kind of put a little bit of oil along the along the seal now i also make sure that i got the rubber seal off on the other oil filter and i did but don't make that mistake because i did that once not on the tractor thank goodness just on a, on a cheap old vehicle that i had but um didn't do any damage just kind of felt dumb so twist this back on you line up the threads because you really don't want to cross thread your oil filter that could be kind of expensive. And that's going on nice. Give it a couple good turns. And now we're gonna put some oil in. Don't forget the drain plug. That's kind of important. I forgot to mention that. Your 23 horsepower Kubota BX takes 3.3 quarts. In fact, the owner's manual says 3.3 liters or 3.3 quarts. And if you do the math, neither one of those are the same, uh, but it does have a little uh, asterisk thing that says if you're gonna do liters, make sure it's to the full mark. So, um, but 3.3 quarts, that should do it. All right, guys, don't forget, you also want to prime your HST filter with some ooh, genuine UDT2 oil. UDT2 oil. Now, there we go. I used a little extra. Mmm, <laughs> smells so good. Nummy. I wonder if you're supposed to use Kubota Genuine parts. They smell delicious. Let's see if I can get this filter wrench up in here. I remember that being kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, there we go. And now let's see if it'll work. Is it, is it the right size? I always grab the wrong one. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, it's just got to turn. Come on. There she goes. Oh, goodness. Gorilla must have put that on. Come on there, filter. There we go. Oh boy, that's just fine. Okay, now I've got this one ready. I'm going to put the wrench on it before I fill it up there. A lot of guys put their dates on their filters just to know when they changed them. And I don't, only because 
I follow the routine service manual, so I just don't really feel like I need to put a date on it. I know the hours on the tractor, and that's when you want to change it. I need a better filter wrench. Anybody got some suggestions? I've heard those strap filter wrenches are pretty good. All right, we've changed the engine filter. We've changed the HST filter. Time to change the air filter. Ew, that's nasty. Ooh, that's clean. Look at the difference here, you guys. Okay. Needs to get done. Don't just blow it out with an air compressor. Get a fresh new one. Your engine will love you for it. Done. Now for my least favorite of them all. The fuel filter. And that's just one of them. There's another one underneath the tractor. I'll show you. See that way up in there? Doesn't that one look fun to change? It really isn't. What a pain in the butt. Come on, Kubota, fix that. Goodness sakes, shouldn't have to be crawling under a tractor to fix a fuel filter. I had to do this once in 20 below weather because it gelled up and I didn't know about at fuel additives at the time and it was really cold. Yeah, <laughs> you can imagine how much fun that was. No kidding, 20 below in my driveway, not the garage. Oh, not a fun day. Make sure you change your fuel filter. What a stupid location. Look at this, it's right there. Can you guys even see that? It's so far up in there. Goodness sakes. Needs to be fixed. This is really one of those things that Kubota really needs to fix. I know there's some um, aftermarket uh, options for me, but it shouldn't have to be an aftermarket option. This should be a standard feature. Well, this, this shouldn't be a standard feature. A standard feature for, you know, changing your filter. Having it up near the engine. This is just ridiculous what I'm doing. Trying to take the bracket off to loosen up the filter. Maybe get a little more wiggle room. Goodness sakes. What a pain in the hind end. a set of left-handed vice grips or I just need to be left-handed one or the other I don't think that's tight enough there that should pinch it off now to get the filter off huh. so I need another pair of pliers Ah, oh, for goodness gracious. I might take the skid plate off just to make life a little bit easier. Well, I guess that's what's going to have to happen because I'd have no option. There's a wrench in there. Ay, ay, ay. How ridiculous. Come on, Kubota. Goodness gracious. If you're wondering why I can't do it now and you're assuming that I did it at my 50 hour service, well, or my 100 hour service, or both, well I didn't. This is the first time the fuel filter's been changed. 200 hours. Oh gosh. That was tight. I got it. This is a serious pain in the butt. Kubota, you need to fix this. This, this filter that's underneath the tractor. It's just dumb. I mean, it's, it was a pain in the butt. I had to remove the skid plate just to give me some more wiggle room to get in there and get this thing off. It's not a good design. It, it needs to be fixed. The little arrow on 
there. You see that little arrow? There's a little arrow on the filter. That's the direction of the fuel. Make sure you get that pointed the right way. Oh, what a pain in the butt to get under here. This needs to be fixed. Did I mention that yet? This really needs to be fixed. There's so many, so many things you gotta move. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. If anybody wants to send me one of those aftermarket uh, filters, I'd be happy to put it on here. Of course, don't do it right after I change this. You know, wait, wait till I put a few more hours on the tractor. <laughs> but if you've got one, I would be happy to market that for you because I really, really, really hate the way this is set up. This is just dumb. I mentioned that once, didn't I? I think so. Kids sick of me complaining. I mean, this is just watch how long this process is. I'll even speed up the video for you. Finished up, all done. Um, I tell you what, it's a real pain in the butt to get that fuel filter that's underneath the tractor. I think I mentioned that. This filter is really easy to change. And I haven't changed this uh, one underneath this tractor yet. And I'm at 200 hours and I know that I was supposed to a while ago, maybe at 100 hours, probably at 50 hours and at 100 hours. Well, uh, I didn't and this is why. Because there's two filters. The one underneath the tractor gets pretty dirty, but uh, this one that was here wasn't all that dirty yet. And my tractor was still running, so I, I didn't really have anything to worry about. It was getting plenty of fuel. Um, so now they're both brand new filters. To bleed the system, the only thing that you do is you leave the key in the on position for about 30 seconds and the air will bleed out of it. You don't need to do anything else. That's really all there is to it. And then uh, that fuel pump will kick in and it'll give the chance for the uh, the fuel line to recharge. Um, you don't need to really crack anything open for that or not. Uh, on other tractors you probably do, but not the BX. Hey guys, here's a little tip. If you got an 80 series and you've got this hood latch, mine's tucked way under there. Can you see it? I can barely get to it. It's because of the cap, but I can still get to it. Put some WD-40 on there. Otherwise, it's going to be a bugger because those tend to stick. So make sure that you get a little WD-40 on that hood latch. All right? I'll show you. All right? Get right in there, little WD-40. That will save you a lot of trouble down the road. With the uh, limited space that I have with that cab on, I really struggled getting the hood open. Um, not this time, but a few weeks prior, checking the oil. So, there you go, 200 hour service. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. Hey, go visit our Facebook page. We got one of those too, called the Ritter Bit Will Do, a little Facebook group, and uh, yeah. So, until next time, keep on tractoring. God bless.